This episode is brought to you by IVP. The words of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech have become enshrined in U.S. history. But since then, what has happened to the struggle for freedom for the African-American community? In his classic IVP book, Free at Last, author Carl Ellis offers an in-depth study of African-American dignity and liberation. With a new preface by Dr. Ellis and a new forward by rapper Sho Baraka, the book proves just as relevant today as when it was first released. And as a listener of this podcast, you can receive Free at Last for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Presented by Inner Varsity Press. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 12 through 19. King David was told, The Lord has blessed the family of Obed-Edom and everything he owns because of the Ark of God. So David went and joyfully brought the Ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David. Those who carried the ark of the Lord took six steps, and then David sacrificed an ox and a fatling calf. Now David, wearing a linen ephod, was dancing with all his strength before the Lord. David and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord, shouting and blowing trumpets. As the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Saul's daughter, Michal, looked out the window. When she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him. They brought the ark of the Lord and put it in its place in the middle of the tent that David had pitched for it. Then David offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before the Lord. When David finished offering the burnt sacrifices and peace offerings, he pronounced a blessing over the people in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. He then handed out to each member of the entire assembly of Israel, both men and women, a portion of bread, a date cake, and a raisin cake. Then all the people went home. 1 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 1 through chapter 16, verse 36. Chapter 15. David brings the ark to Jerusalem. David constructed buildings in the city of David. He then prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, Only the Levites may carry the ark of God, for the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to serve before him perpetually. David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring the ark of the Lord up to the place he had prepared for it. David gathered together the descendants of Aaron and the Levites from the descendants of Kohath, Uriel the leader, and 120 of his relatives from the descendants of Merari, Asiah the leader, and 220 of his relatives from the descendants of Gershom, Joel the leader, and 130 of his relatives. From the descendants of Elizaphon, Shemaiah the leader and two hundred of his relatives. From the descendants of Hebron, Eliel the leader and eighty of his relatives. From the descendants of Uziel, Aminadab the leader and one hundred and twelve of his relatives. David summoned the priests Zadok and Abathar, along with the Levites Uriel, Asiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Aminadab. 
He told them, you are the leaders of the Levites' families. You and your relatives must consecrate yourselves and bring the ark of the Lord God of Israel up to the place I have prepared for it. The first time you did not carry it, this is why the Lord God attacked us, because we did not ask him about the proper way to carry it. The priests and the Levites consecrated themselves so they could bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. The descendants of Levi carried the ark of God on their shoulders with poles, just as Moses had commanded in keeping with the Lord's instruction. David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint some of their relatives as musicians. They were to play various instruments, including stringed instruments and cymbals, and to sing loudly and joyfully. So the Levites appointed Heman, son of Joel, one of his relatives, Asaph, son of Berechiah, one of the descendants of Mirari, Ethan, son of Cushiah, along with some of their relatives who were second in rank, including Zechariah, Jeezeel, Shemeroth, Jehiel, Unah, Eliab, Beniah, Maseiah, Matitha, Elithalu, Machniah, Obed-Edom, and Jeel, the gatekeepers. The musicians Heman, Asaph, and Ethan were to sound the bronze cymbals. Zechariah, Aziel, Shemeroth, Jehiel, Unah, Eliab, Maaseah, and Beniah were to play the harps according to the Alamoth style. Mattathiah, Eliphalahu, Mikneath, Obed-Edom, Jael, and Azaziah were to play the lyres according to the Sheminith style as led by the director. Kenethiah, the leader of the Levites, was in charge of transport, for he was well informed on this matter. Barakiah and Elkaniah were guardians of the ark. Shebaniah, Josephat, Nathanael, Amasai, Zechariah, Beniah, and Eleazar, the priests were to blow the trumpets before the ark of God. Obed-Edom and Jehel were also guardians of the ark. So David, the leaders of Israel, and the commanders of the units of a thousand went to bring up the ark of the Lord's covenant from the house of Obed-Edom with celebration. When God helped the Levites who were carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. David was wrapped in a linen robe, as were all the Levites carrying the Ark, the musicians, and Keniah, the supervisor of transport, and the musicians. David also wore a linen ephod. All Israel brought up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. They were shouting, blowing trumpets, sounding cymbals, and playing stringed instruments. As the Ark of the Lord's Covenant entered the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked out the window when she saw King David jumping and celebrating. She despised him. Chapter 16. David Leads in Worship They brought the Ark of God and put it in the middle of the tent David had pitched for it. Then they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. When David finished offering burnt sacrifices and peace offerings, he pronounced a blessing over the people in the Lord's name. He then handed out to each Israelite man and woman a loaf of bread, a date cake, and a raisin cake. He appointed some of the Levites to serve before the Ark of the Lord, to offer prayers, songs of thanks, and hymns to the Lord God of Israel. Asaph was the leader and Zechariah second in command, followed by Jeel, Shemiramoth, Jehil, Mattatiah, Eliab, Beniah, Obed-Edom, and Jeel. They were to play stringed instruments. Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and the priests, Beniah and Jehaziel, were to blow trumpets regularly before the Ark of God's Covenant. David thanks God. That day David first gave to Asaph and his colleagues this song of thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his accomplishments among the nations. Sing to him. Make music to him. Tell about all his miraculous deeds. Boast about his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and the strength he gives. Seek his presence continually. Recall the miraculous deeds he performed, his mighty acts and the judgments he decreed. O children of Israel, God's servant, you descendants of Jacob, God's chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. He carries out judgment throughout the earth. Remember continually his covenantal decree, the promise he made to a thousand generations, the promise he made to Abraham, the promise he made by oath to Isaac. He gave it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as a lasting promise, saying, 
To you I will give the land of Canaan as the portion of your inheritance. When they were few in number, just a very few, and foreign residents within it, they wandered from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another. He let no one oppress them. He disciplined kings for their sake, saying, Don't touch my anointed ones. Don't harm my prophets. Saying to the Lord all the earth, Announce every day how he delivers. Tell the nations about his splendor. Tell all the nations about his miraculous deeds. For the Lord is great and certainly worthy of praise. He is more awesome than all gods. For all the gods of the nations are worthless. But the Lord made the heavens. Majestic splendor emanates from him. He is the source of strength and joy. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the nations. Ascribe the Lord splendor and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the splendor he deserves. Bring an offering and enter his presence. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be happy. Let the nations say, the Lord reigns. Let the sea and everything in it shout. Let the fields and everything in them celebrate. Then let the trees of the forest shout with joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his loyal love endures. Say this prayer. Deliver us, O God who delivers us. Gather us, rescue us from the nations. Then we will give thanks to your holy name and boast about your praiseworthy deeds. May the Lord God of Israel be praised in the future and forevermore. Then all the people said, We agree. Praise the Lord. New Testament reading. Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 through 30. Jesus and little children. Then little children were brought to him for him to lay his hands on them and pray. But the disciples scolded those who brought them. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not try to stop them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And he placed his hands on them and went on his way. The rich young man. Now someone came up to him and said, Teacher, what good thing must I do to gain eternal life? He said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Which ones? He asked. Jesus replied, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have wholeheartedly obeyed all these laws. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he was very rich. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it will be hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. The disciples were greatly astonished when they heard this and said, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and replied, This is impossible for mere humans, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him, Look, we have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. In the age when all things are renewed, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And whoever has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last. And the last first. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Gracious and holy and righteous and merciful God, we thank you. We bow before you today for you indeed are worthy and you are God. God all by yourself. We honor your name, Lord, for you are the thrice holy creator of all that is and all that was and all that will be. And you are a God who demonstrates your might and your power through compassion, through forgiveness, 
through grace and through patience. We are indeed in awe of you and thankful, O oh God, that because of the resurrection, we are your children. We thank you for the power of the gospel, the gospel to save and to be at work, making all things new. Our hearts, which were of stone into hearts of flesh, hearts that are growing more and more each day, being sanctified each day to obey you, to submit to what you say, to love our neighbor, to do justice, to walk humbly with our God. We are grateful for this change, this renewal that has come through the power of the resurrection. We thank you that all things are being made new. And so, oh God, even as we greet you today, even as we come boldly before your throne because of the resurrection, because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done on our behalf, we come with burdened and heavy hearts. There is indeed pain in our land. There is hurt. There is turmoil. There is confusion. There are families turned against families. There are wars and rumors of wars. There is political unrest and confusion. There is greed and lust and selfishness that dominates our world through every media source. And, oh God, we come weary and tired and burdened down by the weight of sin, our own sin and the systemic sins of this world. And yet we are reminded that you are at work making all things new. God, we thank you that you are at work. And it reminds us that because you are at work, we can rest in the work that you have done and the work that you are doing on behalf of your people, on behalf of your world. And gracious God, we are mindful that like those little children, let us come to you. Let us come to you fully dependent in awe of who you are. And we are thankful, O oh God, that you continue to bless the children, that you continue to bless the children of this world, that you continue to bless the children of the covenant community, O oh God. Let us be in fear, trembling fear, for any way that our actions or behaviors or complicity or cover-ups, O oh God, have in any way, shape, or form been a stumbling block to children seeing you, the one who loves them and blesses them, O oh God. Would you, O oh Lord, rebuke your church? Rebuke your church and get your church in order for any of the ways, the many ways, presently and throughout history, that we have not loved and protected children, O oh God. We are reminded the ways in which we can be so delusional as we reflect on the story about this young ruler, this rich ruler, who haughtily thought that he had fulfilled the law in his own strength. Oh God, that he went away sorrowful because he was rich. We pray, oh God, that everything that we have, every resource that we have, whether tangible or educational, whatever expression of resource that we have, we render it back over to you, that the things that we have don't serve as a witness against us a witness to our greed, a witness to our selfishness, a witness to our haughtiness, believing that we have fulfilled your law in our own strength. We pray, O oh God, that you would rebuke your church, that you would cause us to have the faith to know that you preserve and uphold the church, not our money, not our resources, not our political power, O oh God, but that you alone keep the church if it is indeed the real church. And so, O oh God, we want to be real Christians. We want to be real Christians and be a part of the real church. We want indeed, O oh God, be your people, O oh Lord. So would you guide us in the narrow way? Would you correct us where we are wrong? Would you grant us the faith to obey? Would you, O oh Lord, remind us that we do not keep ourselves, that our money does not keep us, but that we are kept only by the love and the power of you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your keeping power. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your mercy, your kindness, and your goodness. And we thank you even, Lord, for your correction now, because your word reminds us that a father who loves his children corrects them. So would you correct your church where there is greed unchecked, where there are abuses done to children, when there is complicity that covers up such? Would you expose it, O oh God? Would you clean house, O oh God? And O oh Lord, would you bring to us a revival, a revival of Christian integrity and Christian ethics? Let it start in the doors of our churches, O oh God. Let it start within our hearts. In Christ's name we pray and we thank you for another day and another set of new mercies. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, 
Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee.